Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Patreon review video. I am Sylphid. What is up with this? Well, I'm just ready to start the stream for PC build blog, but anyways, this is a uh, Patreon review video. We are checking out Ferenth, a long time Patreon supporter, absolutely fantastic Ferenth. Um, he has a Wukong deck he would like to get reviewed and that's what we are doing today if you guys don't know anything about my patreon basically it's a way for you to support me on a monthly basis uh, do what I love keep the channel going all of this kind of stuff so if you guys don't know anything about that link down in the video description as uh, maybe you would like to support me and, and and help me do what I love <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into this as uh, we see Ferenth here in the offlane with Wukong. So, it looks like he's starting off with Armored Footman. Uh, you know what? Hey, as a as a carry, as a melee carry in the offlane, starting off with something like Armored Footman to stay alive, honestly, probably pretty darn important. At the moment, we know that Wukong has... Ha he, he gets too much gold at least in the data department uh, balance wise he gets too much gold from his passive so you know what staying alive and just relying on that really not too bad of an idea um another unique opportunity i would say for ferenth here or for any offlane wukongs is um order absolutely fantastic with um knight of asher and sacred alchemy and all those kind of ridiculous <laughs> those ridiculous cards there but also growth growth to be honest with you so you can get the coin master you can stay out of combat stay safe especially in the higher elos to be honest with you um you know they're going to be very aggressive and you're going to have a tough time just staying alive right so getting coin master something in the early game um you know hey as a carry especially where you can you know just that's your job to stay there and farm absolutely going to be um a consideration and i just like growth growth in the off lane growth in the jungle feels really good growth as a support i mean it just it it, fe it, it feels really good that's just my personal play style but there are still some legitimate reasons why you would pick um why you would pick those economy cards something like um something like coin master Highwaymen, maybe not so much, even if it is maybe the more viable, uh, the more viable economy card, arguably. Uh, but you know what, Coin Master, hey, that is definitely an option. Armored Footman, absolute no, uh, no, no qualms with that for sure here in this early game. Next card here we've got is Poised Aggressor. That's honestly a very, very good card uh, for, for, for an offlaner, especially somebody like Wukong. Once you get that ultimate, um, it'll really help with your, with uh, kind of just scale with your clones as well. And you know what, that work, it, 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 it's, it's surprisingly useful. Whenever the enemy minion wave gets into your tower, you can engage on those ranged minions or the melee minions or whoever you want really, and you get that bonus damage. Works really well. Works really well if, if you can if you can utilize it, go into combat and out of combat, um, and kind of just play that back and forth game and utilize poised aggressor. Because the more you are in sustained combat, the less value you get from it. Very very good. Uh, the gem here we got is healing towers absolutely freaking in the in, in the off lane um just basically an absolute must again um if the duo uh well, if there was a duo at all i'm not sure uh interesting enemy team compositions if they were there and if they were being much more aggressive like they kind of should be and keeping you at bay especially as a bukong off lane carry they have to shut you down so you got to play safe um absolutely healing towers 110 percent poised aggressor again gonna help you um clear the clear the waves defend your tower get those last hits etc etc so it is it is a uh, it is a, a, a good good card now because i mentioned growth previously i have to mention it now um some other cards in there would be exoskeleton reduce um enemy damage by eight that's going to be a good one for a lot of pokey pokey offlane comps um if you're going to go with coin master and then um 
and, and then exoskeleton. You combine exoskeleton with armored footmen, and oh boy, you basically uh, you basically have incredible sustain, especially with the um, especially 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 with with the healing towers, and that can just keep you safe for you to farm up in 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 the match as well. We can maybe talk about some of the. Uh, gems here, but we'll talk about them when when they when they come up. Now we reach a point where we've gotten some agility. We have unlocked uh, fast travel, and you know what? On a Wukong, it's actually not all that bad. If you are, uh, you know, if you're up to, if you have coins to to uh, coins, if you have uh, gems to um, kind of left over, just to put stuff into fast travel on a Wukong to, to get him even the, the faster faster split push capability, the faster rotations to the rest of his team. You know, on, on any character, it's actually probably not all that bad. Uh, so I I like that if, if, if it doesn't compromise other key gems. We have Guard Piercer, basic damage uh, while well, we have power and then armor penetration. That's going to go a long way on on Wukong, and you know what? If well, your order death, that's gonna work really well um, as you get <laughs> as you get taken out here. Really good card, absolutely, um, absolutely must have early early game um, card here that, that you're gonna go into. Not sacrificing anything else because you have some some extras, so that's really good, really really good. And there's yeah, I mean there's really nothing else. And we've reached a point of having another card, and that's Swamp Stalker. Uh, the card itself, I love it on 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 Wukong. Deal 35 bonus basic damage to enemy units when you have no allied hero nearby. Absolutely perfect for a split push Wukong. 110%. If you can combine Swamp Stalker with Sacred Alchemy, with Knight of Asher, with basically any any shield card, any life steal card. I mean, that's going to be astro freaking nominal. Uh, astronomical, wow. <laughs> it's early in the morning, I'm sorry. Ferris. It's going to be fantastic. In, in in theory, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful card. And you know what? G just great, great pick, great, great thinking. Now, what you also have to think of at this point, though, is what's more valuable? Two, two of these weaker cards or one of the larger cards. So one 13 point card, and then you get Poised Aggressor and Armored Footman or something like that uh, to kind of fill it out. Um, you know, is the Knight of Asher, if you got it, uh, worth it? And you know what, I actually think it would. Getting Knight of Asher and just keeping it, period. Don't, like, just just get it and, and wait till you're 25 and 25 and X, then, then switch over to, um, to, to your final deck I think that's actually honestly the the way to go that is the whole kind of point of those elevate cards to, to be honest with you the 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 elevate cards are not a they are end game cards I mean they have that they have fantastic passives but the, what they are they're a mid game card that then scales with your attribute points that you collect to get to the end game and then when you get there you can trade those attribute points that you are scaling from the passive. You can trade those for other cards that only at that late game beats out Knight of Asher. So right now, for example, I think Knight of Asher beats out the benefit of Swamp Stalker, Guard Piercer, um, and Poised Aggressor, even if you combine the whole thing. Because that is 13, that's 21, that is 21... 20, it's two bonus damage per attack, I do believe, something like that. So that's 42 plus the 25 that comes on it. So you're 75 basic damage. You're almost you're almost a Hellfire engine at this point. You're almost a Hellfire engine, plus it has power, attack speed, and basic armor. And you know what? On a Wukong, just split push, just split split push your your balls off. <laughs> and you know what? And you're you fulfilling you are fulfilling the purpose of Wukong. And that's really, really important. 
Now, we can actually talk about your gems here that, that you've gotten. Um, fast travel again, in in theory, I like it. Whether that 40 minutes speed actually amounts to anything, that's that would, that would require a lot of uh, a lot of experience to, to be honest with you to, to see if um, to see if that actually pays off at, at, at any point. Duelist, I actually like on Wukong. He can split push and save this Murdoch. You can basically one v one the absolute snot out of out of this Murdoch. Like he's gonna do twenty percent less damage. You can just if he's gonna be like this, you should be absolutely be able to take him out. Twenty percent exactly. Look at that. That is why I like Duelist um, on Wukong because if anybody has to come and deal with you, even two people and you hit them and your clones hit them, they're dead. They're gone. They are straight, like they're like 20% less over any any damage. Less damage, base ability damage, basic damage, doesn't matter. I absolutely really, really love it on Wukong. So, and especially with something like Swamp Stalker, it kind of compounds it. Not really, but I, just, I, I love it. Lifesteal on Wukong, again, so that 1v1 duel goes in your favor. Absolutely, freaking literally 110% love Lifesteal gem on Wukong. Then, at the end, Bounty Stalker couldn't have, I mean, this is, again, perfect for Wukong. He just needs power to take down the towers, uh, to feed into his clones, and attack speed to make, to make the application of those attacks and clones even better. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, that, that, that's, my, that's my opinion, anyways. Uh, kind of, you know, my opinion based on his purpose and what kind of really suits well with him. Um, and there you go. So at this point, you have transitioned. Looks like there's a little bit of a bug. I was like, how do you have so many points in, in uh, vitality and knowledge? But uh, it's not. And there, finally here, Knight of Asher. The at this point, <laughs> you're almost doing it reverse of what of, of what I think of of what I think I have seen in 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 the higher elos and just what kind of makes sense. Uh, Knight of Asher, 1.5 per attribute point. Okay, so you have 26. Uh, meaning 26 plus 13, that is 39. 39 plus the plus the 25, that's 64? Did I do that right? 64 additional damage. I mean, 64% of Hellfire engine that doesn't die when, or that, that, that you don't lose when you die. Hey, freaking amazing. Now, at this point, though, this is kind of the point. This is kind of the moment when you do actually get rid of Knight of Asher, um, or not get rid of it, but instead slot other things in addition to. It. So you are Death. You do have Vampiric Blade uh, as an option. Vampiric Blade plus Knight of Asher, plus the Duelist Gem, plus the Life Steal Gem. Oh my freaking lord! You're gonna be able to just like nobody is gonna do absolutely anything against you um, at all, and that's absolutely what. I, what I love. Auto shield here, fantastic in the early game. That is, I mean, it, it is by far uh, superior. Wow, did you just kind of totally melt that Wukong? I kind of actually want to do that. Ah, <laughs> yes you did, didn't you? Oh, you're 18, he's 12. Yeah, I know, he has, he has no, uh, he, he has, he has no help there. Yeah, so, um, I forgot what I, forgot what I was saying. Oh, auto shield, yes. Fantastic in the early game, 110% worth it. We're pretty much the only real option there at that um, at at that at that tier, and I almost have it on every single one of my of, of my decks because that hundred that hundred shield, especially in the game, even now, eh, you're starting to get into the end game here. It's actually really really powerful. So um, really really good job of picking that up. I would 100% agree. Fast travel maybe could be switched out. For another agility gem, uh, we got the life steal bounty stalker. Duelist is the tier, yeah, 19, 25, 13, 7. Well, you know what? Yeah, you, you don't really have any more options after that. Uh, what's what else is in fast travel? Wealthy. Uh, we got uh, improved killing blows. No, that's tier. That's slot one. So you know what? Yeah, I mean. Wealthy could be an option so on, on one of the heroes that can farm the best on, on Wukong. I know I did math about it, but hey, I wouldn't. I, I would be upset for for Wealthy fast travel. You know what? Yeah, good job, Wealthy. Hundred. Yeah, that well done. That's that, that's that's going to be um that's going to be a good, good good card for sure. And here we go to the final deck. 
Malink's Tribute and Sacred Alchemy. I mean, there you go. I mean, you don't need anything else other than these three cards. Knight of Astros, the one that's going to increase your damage the most here in the Order Affinity. You do have Death, um, Vampiric Blade. It could be an option. I'm actually wondering if Vampiric Blade, instead of Malink's Tribute, is actually better. Uh, the attribute cost, I'm not 100% sold. Uh, I, I, I can't remember right off the top of my head. I think uh, Vampiric Blade's 8. 8 agility, 9 agility, something like that. Um, and I'm not sure if it, if it, if it works in total here. As, oh, actually, maybe not. So look at this. You're a 4 person. 4 person. Look at this. Just go into town. Oh my goodness, well, look at this. Look at this. This is exactly what... Uh, just amazing. Absolutely amazing. That is 110% why you get these cards on Wukong. You are endgame deck. And I'm just wondering if you can get Vampiric Blade here in, in, in terms of uh, Melling's Tribute. I don't think you can. Secret Alchemy's 8 uh, attribute points. Knight of Asher, I think, is... Well, he, it's 13, I know that. So that automatically right there is 21. So I know, I don't think you, you can get Vampiric Blade, can you? Um... If you can, I would do it. Otherwise, I mean, there's nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong here. Uh, again, that auto shield could have helped you out here probably. Um, with a little bit more sustain, give you that split second to hit another target to reduce their damage by 20%, to get a shield to heal from it. So um, don't underestimate that. One little point here it goes, certainly goes a long way. 2,500 health as Wukong and the 33 meta mark. Well done, man. Uh, yeah, so like, I just want to see you wreck some face here oh my goodness look at this look at this absolute craziness yes hit both of them remember that duelist gem remember that duelist gem as long as you've hit hit them both then they have then they both have reduced damage so yeah this this wukong he, he's just too strong he, he he's he's too strong i mean this this kind of this is kind of crazy you're, you're you're getting like tank levels of of sustain with with carry levels of DPS obviously so oh yeah I mean you're just you're just going off of that's just insane absolutely just insane just just insane <laughs> well done I mean what else is there to say I mean yeah I mean unless you want awaken the Emmerich um, this this is it. This is you, you. You got it, man. You don't need my my advice for for this end game deck. Uh, early game. I mean, I don't know. You can probably get you can probably get um, the equivalent of you can probably get the equivalent of vampiric uh, uh, the guard piercer. The uh, what's it called? I thought I saw it over here. Did I? No. Um, in growth, and you could maybe maybe get similar maybe a little bit better performance in um in the early game with growth instead of death but then i don't know it's it, it, it's it's kind of up to you so i just really want to see you wreck face here all right here's or prime let's see you wreck or prime solo like they said they didn't want to be soloed, but if you built for it, you should be able to do it. So that's fine. But unfortunately, this is what people do all the time anyway. So, you know, the abnormal builds they wanted to be able to solo or prime with is now mandatory and or standard. So they're kind of breaking, kind of breaking their own logic reasoning with these cards, so. But, very easy, may very easily be able to do that. Is this a Master Wukong? Can't tell. Is it a Master? I can't tell. Are you Master? Or where are you? I don't think so. Yeah, so I'm super easy or prime. There you go. Look at this nonsense. Look, look at this nonsense. What have you done, Karen? What have you done? Look at this nonsense. Good. Attack the gadget so our ult doesn't do as much damage. 
There you go, the Murdoch. They obviously can't do any absolutely anything to you. And then the uh, Wukong guys instantly. Yeah. Wukong. You're just amazing. <laughs> now imagine if you had just Knight of Asher. I mean, Sacred Alchemy is what's keeping you alive here. And same with Palanx Tribute. But, I mean, how many points? That'd be 50, 57. You would get 70... Eighty something basic additional basic damage. My God. So hey, Ferenth, amazing deck. I mean, you could maybe switch Death to Growth with to get some similar options to what you what you have in the early game and um, in the early game and, and and mid game maybe. But oh my God, even with backdoor protection. Wow, well done. That's 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 it. That's a that's about my that's about my tips for you. Um, maybe there's some better growth options in the early game that can help you get to your excellent late game deck better, faster, easier stuff like that. Otherwise, I mean, death. I mean, swamp stalker is freaking amazing. Guard Piercer is amazing as well, whatever that card's called, if that's card called what it is. Th th those cards are amazing. Like, perfect. I mean, they give you tremendous value. They fulfill his purpose well. <sighs> I mean, well done. What can I say? So guys, again, um, huge shout out to Ferris for sending this to me. If you are already a, a, one of my Patreon supporters, uh, make sure to send your replays or decks or stuff like that, um, depending on your reward tier, to me by the 25th of each month or so just so I can get those out um because yeah a lot of you don't send stuff to me and maybe it's just you guys being nice and want to support me and don't really care but uh <laughs> just don't, don't forget if, if, if you guys do want to so thank you, thank you guys very much for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed that learned a thing or two and uh excellent deck Ferenc amazing Please like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, share it with the community, and of course guys subscribe. If you guys like this content, especially if you found it useful, please subscribe so I can do it for you in the future. If you would like to support me on a regular basis, please head on over to my Patreon account where you can make a pledge to help me do what I love. Till next time, like always guys, stay optimistic and positive.